Welcome to another video for Qt for Python and in this video we're going to cover uh, start covering Qt Designer so it's all nice and jolly when you're just doing code and trying to prototype stuff and you're coding your applications like this but Qt Designer saves you a lot of time when you're building your UIs and that's why we're going to look at Qt Designer today now, if you have PySide, you can just browse to wherever you got Python uh, 3.10. We're working with Python 3.10 in this case. Your Python version, go to your Python version folder, go into lib, look for site packages, go into site packages, and look for your PySide 6, and you should find Qt Designer in there. Now, if you're using PyQt uh, 6, you want to download uh, using pip install PyQt6 tools. Now PyQt6 doesn't work with uh, yet. This version doesn't work with uh, Python 3.10. So this would make you well. You're obliged to to go down to 3.9 or get PySide and use the the Qt designer from PySide instead. I still have 3.9 installed in my computer and I can quickly show you how you can get there so if you go to Python 3.9 you go to lib site packages and in site packages you want to look for Qt5 designer if I'm not wrong uh, Qt5 applications or Qt6 applications or in that uh, in case you're doing that Qt bin and you should find your designer there I'm going to go on and open up Designer at PySite 6 because I'm using Python 3.10 at the moment. Let's open it up and see what we got. So when it, when it opens up, it prompts you with this new form window and you can select from any recent files or create a new one. And as you can see, you can use a main window or a widget. Um, let's go with the main window because that's what we did in the previous example with code and I'll press, I can change the screen size here if we like I'm just gonna go with the standard one and press create now this is the PySide version uh, and this is the, the version 6 and I something I used to do uh, a lot is come there here and go into view Python code uh, to check out the code how it's gonna how it was gonna look like after it came out of uh, Qt Designer but uh, the thing is there's unable to launch there's this little error uh, da, 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 da. the system cannot find the file specified and it doesn't allow us to check out the code and what's up in there but that's that's really not a problem because we're going to see how we can do this in a different way which is also a more convenient way as you can see up here we got untitled UI and this is going to be our UI the window the main window that's going to open up when we call Q main window like we did on the previous example so here on the object inspector is everything that it's inside of the main window and you see and you can see we have a main window class and we have a queue widget class which is the central widget and if you if you remember from the previous tutorial we actually access that we created the main window up here and then we access the central widget in the main window and we made the, a button to be the central widget so to recreate that in here we can go here to the left palette and here is all the widgets that are available to us uh, f with that come with Qt Designer of course there are more widgets that we can use but Qt Designer only supports these guys so to recreate what we did before if I place a Q push button in here as soon as I place it in there you can see that it's inside the central widget to change the button text I can double click on the button and say my button now in the, our previous example you can see that the button is the size of the window and on Qt it's not the size of the window to make that happen we have this property editor and this will change the properties of what's selected at the moment so if I expand this a little bit we have geometry we have a bunch of stuff here um, we can see the size policy it's how it's this button is going to um, resize so if we say expanding and expanding actually you can go use the up and down keys to change the size policy and see what happens now I don't have a layout that's why nothing is happening so if I if I right click on my window now that I have a button I should have some layouts to choose from 
and let's choose a horizontal layout which is also up here okay horizontal layout vertical layout you also have grid layout and a form layout so now it's looking more like what we have there in the code our button is big because I said to expand if I select a different one like um, maximum on the horizontal it's gonna go to the maximum of the size of the, the, the text if I say my awesome button you can see that it resizes to the size of the of the text so if I just go to go back to expanding I'll get that now to check how it's gonna look like roughly we can do a control R or go into form and preview and there it is our button now no notice one thing is when we changed uh, the, the size policy uh, this became bold and if I if I click here you can see there's a little arrow here and if I press that arrow it goes back to the original uh, uh, with no changes so now that there are no changes it goes back to how it was originally what, what this means is that every time I change a setting here on the properties that's gonna write some code on the back end and that's gonna show up when we have our file in code alright so I want it I want it to go back and uh, back to expanding I like my button big anyway let's go down here this is all yellow as you can see once we get down here we get to a class that is specific to our button and it's the Q abstract button class remember this from the previous tutorial exactly this is where we have some more uh, options and here is the Q push button class where we don't have that many options so here in the Q abstract button we can do some other stuff uh, like you set up a shortcut for example and if I press a shortcut and let's say uh, control one uh, that's the shortcut for my button you should press my button um, we can also go to the signal slot editor here and tell our button to do something now we're probably going to use code more for this because it's a lot more flexible but for basic stuff you can actually use this so it, the sender let's add a new signal first okay double click here on the sender and what do we want to do what's the sender the sender is my push button which by the way that's the object name that's important because this is the the name that you're going to use to access this button through code so push button is the sender the signal that I that I want is on clicked okay sounds familiar from the previous example we said clicked and then the connection or the receiver who's gonna receive this signal we're gonna say main window is gonna receive this signal and the slot what is the slot close we're gonna tell the main window which is a, a subclass of Q widget to close so when I press this button the, the main window should close it doesn't do anything here but once it's in code it should so now I'm gonna save this I'm gonna do a control S and I'll save it here as this file and it's gonna be a UI file so dot UI and this file if if I open it up you'll see that this file is a uh, it's actually an XML file with information about what classes and and, and all that hang on a second where is it here we go my first Qt designer UI so you can see it's an XML file and the information is right here main window is the name of the window because I didn't I didn't name it and that's the default uh, it has a class of widget class Q main window with the object name of main window and then down here we have our Q push button right there we have our central widget which is a Q widget our push button inside minimum expanding the name that we gave in it my awesome button okay we got the shortcut here control plus one we got Q okay Q menu bar and key status bar they are part of Q main window uh, and then we have our signal here with the connections remember the connect connections push button on clicked 
the receiver is going to be the main window and we're going to close it so you can see the xml file is like this now the next step is to turn this xml file into actually a py file a python file so that we can execute it so i'll leave that for the next video and i'll see you there